Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. Uh, today I would like to answer a very common question that I get from a lot of people and it's a very valid question because the Spanish town that you're seeing here is running or was made in a real form and most of the Environment Art Mastery tutorial uh, was recorded with Unreal 4. I would say like 97-98% of the content and I get asked like quite frequently if I'm using Unreal 5, like will I have a problem following the course? And today I want to demonstrate that Unreal 4 and 5 is the exactly same engine. The UI is a little uh, updated, but and Unreal 5 of course has a few new features, but even those features are optional. Like the same environment here can run just as well in Unreal 5. The reason that I didn't port this tutorial, uh, this environment to Unreal 5 is because I'm making it for VR and I'm using a framework which is called VR GK that handles all the VR stuff, you know, it has like a main menu, uh, like it has a physics based body and sadly that plugin wasn't updated to Unreal 5 because in Unreal 5 Epic changed the physics cities system so that plugin would not work otherwise I could have exactly the same maybe even better uh, that I have here in Unreal 5 and the main point is the content in the tutorial is not about how to use Unreal it's about how to make environments so Unreal is the tool or rather Unreal 4 is the tool that I use it for that course but I would say like 98, maybe 99% of the content carries over to Unity, for example, or any other 3D engine, you know? You just have to change a few ways, for example, how the engine handles the files, like all that stuff. And But overall, the process is very similar. So don't worry if you feel like, oh, I'm, I'm if, if I do this, I'm going to be outdated because it's not a real five and like trust me like i work in a real five all day and i and i work pretty much the same way uh with some uh little differences if we're using the new features in a real five but i'll cover those in this video too so what i want to do here today is first open this project in a real five just open in a real five uh with the same settings and see what happens and then after I'm going to create a new project with the default settings, you know, like the same settings that you would have by starting a new project. And I'm going to move uh, the files, the content from this map to this empty project and see what happens, you know, like see what kind of settings we have to change to, to get it to look good. Uh, but yeah, it's it should be an interesting uh, experiment. So let's just jump right in and see what's going to happen. Okay, so let's start here by launching uh, Unreal 5.2 and yeah, it's not the latest version, but that should be okay for now. So here on this screen, instead of creating a new project, I'm going to pick the Spanish town and uh, let's change the project location here. Oh, I can't, I guess, if I click open, open a copy, yes. Um, I guess it will just create the folders with a different name. And yeah, it seems like the launcher is frozen, so we run into our first problem here. Let's make sure that it is doing something. Unreal Editor, well, there you go. So I'm just gonna pause the video while this loads because it will take a, a little bit because it's compiling the shaders uh, and then we'll see how it looks like. Oh, and by the way, 
here's a tip to speed up the shader uh, compilation. If you go to the task manager, go to details and look for shader compile worker, uh, right click set priority. You, you will see that by standard, by default, it's set to be low normal. So this will be very slow because it's not going to use most of your CPU. So what we can do is we can change to high, um, all of them. This will speed them up. And while the project loads, I will show you how you can make this automatic because there is a setting. So let's go to Epic. Yeah, you go to where Unreal is installed, not your project file, like the engine. And go to engine, config. Now I have to rem check which one this is. Let me pause the video. Yeah, so it's the base engine file. And you do control F. By the way, this is Notepad++. Uh, if you don't have this program, I uh, you have to get it because it's Notepad, but much better because you can open like JSON files, like any files and it's gonna color code. You can even program on this and it's an open source, uh, amazing program. So open the base engine, control F, look for worker and you wanna find this one here, worker process pri priority. And by, it says here that zero is normal and by default it's minus one. So that's the below normal. So zero is normal. One is above normal, and I like to have them two. Uh, I think real time is overkill, it slows down the computer. So the next time that the shader compiler uh, worker launches, it will launch with the high uh, setting. And of course, your computer will slow down a little bit because it will use more power for the shader com compi compilation. But as you can see, like it already went almost half of those 5,000. It's gonna go much faster now. So let's just pause the video and wait for that to be done. Okay, so the shader compiler finished outside the project, but it's still compiling some stuff. And let's see. Okay, so <laughs> here's the project, the same project open in Unreal 5. Looks exactly the same, exactly. No difference at all. Same project. And to prove this, let me open. Let's see, I hope my computer doesn't explode. But let's open both at the same time. Actually, it's fine because this is all a baked lighting. This environment is very well optimized. Uh, and because uh, I made it for VR and uh, yeah, there is a chapter in the tutorial about optimization and I show a lot of different ways you can make your map run faster. But uh, let's try to go to the same place. Uh, like maybe here. Okay, now I want you to see any differences. Try and find the exact same place. <laughs> it looks exactly the same. There is absolutely no difference except the UI. But you see the UI is is the same. It's just in a real five. It's a bit more. Um, I don't know. Updated. You know, it looks it looks a little better. But you see, like, is the same information, the same content. Things moved here and there, but I mean, like this proves, right, that the contents there for Unreal 5 is the same. So the next task I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project with the Unreal 5 default setting. So this new project will have Lumen, you know, like all this stuff. And let's see what kind of changes we need to do to get this to be like a proper Unreal 5 project. 
Okay, so here, let's launch a real engine from here because we want to create a new project. And uh, let's just choose game, first person, blueprint, quality, maximum. Uh, yeah, let's enable ray tracing. And let's do like Spanish style. Uh, let's come up with some stupid name. The new. So here. So let's hit create, and this will be an empty project, of course. Uh, and also let's check that our shader compiler is. You, so you see like now it launches with the high priority so you don't have to do this anymore every time it launches shader compiler uh it will launch with this and look how interesting it's about the same uh amount as the project that i opened before you know and this is an empty project with no content so i'm just gonna pause the video and then i'll come back when this is over all right, so here we got a name to project, right? The first thing that you see when you open a reel. And I'm just missing the content drawer here. Let's dock this. Because I want to be able to see this. So there are a few ways to do this. I'll try the easiest one first. So I'm going to right click the Spanish town folder and I can go to migrate. And then it's gonna look for all the dependencies this project has. So I used a few packs from the internet, from a, a real marketplace. Uh, and you see like it's picking up those files, so it's gonna move only the files that it, it needs. So now we go to our real project, the new era, and you go to content. You, you wanna drop in the content folder when you use migrate. Select folder and I was gonna copy those files there. Some content could not be copied. Some files, let's see. Could not be added to source control. I think we can ignore those problems. Uh, so let's go to the new map and a new project and we see all the stuff here. Spanish town. It should be in maps and we open Spanish Town. Let's see what happens. I'm probably gonna have to change a few settings here and there, but let's see. So this project now is running uh, with Lumen enabled. It's not using the baked uh, information that I had before and look at this it's there same project and now it looks better because it's using lumen you know so I don't have to bake the lighting anymore look at this so let's compare so here's with the baked lighting and here's with lumen so there are some differences, right? Like the color is a little different because, you know, like the, the way it handles the ambient light uh, is a little different. But yeah, it's, it's just better. You know, the reflections are much better because here I'm using reflection probes. So you see, it's some random reflection in a way. But here you got proper reflections. The windows now, they reflect what's behind them. So this is a really cool effect. You see the reflections are much better. But that's pretty much it. We didn't even have to change any settings here. You know, everything just worked by default. Those dynamic shadows, I'm sure they look much, much better in a real file. Let's compare. You see like how they get a little blurry here and Unreal 5 uses the virtual shadow map technology and yeah look that's a big difference so much better but 
um, for, uh, sadly, a lot of these features they're not going to run in VR, so that's why I didn't port the project. But as an environment artist, like, is there like anything here that this can't do besides, you know, a little better quality? Like the same envir environment art, same, same thing, no difference. So. I hope this clears uh, this question and also uh, demonstrates, you know, like how some knowledge is timeless, right? Like a lot of things, like the, the technology changes, but some of the knowledge is timeless. And that's what I tried. That's what I, that was my goal with this course was to transmit this knowledge, you know, that I acquired after decades making environments and a lot of those things I still do the same way that I did like 20 years ago. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this presentation and if you were on the fence about uh, investing your time in the tutorial because it's Unreal 4, I hope this clears it up and shows you that it's, irre it's re irrelevant. So I'll see you in the next video and I hope you enjoyed this one. Hey. If you enjoyed this video and you're looking to step up your environment art skills, I invite you to check my environment art creation course, Environment Art Mastery. This is a massive course that took me more than two years to put together and contains everything that I learned about environment art creation after more than a decade in the games industry. The course contains everything you need to know to be able to come up with your own ideas and take them to completion by using an easy-to-follow process that breaks down the creative process in logic steps. This process can be used to create all kinds of environments, no matter the style, theme or engine. If you want to know more, visit environmentartmastery.com or watch the deep dive video in my channel. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video.